On the Ground, presented by The Cube. Here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hi everybody, Jeff Frick here. We are on the ground in San Francisco at the Mission Bay Conference Center for a, a special on the ground presentation. You've heard a lot of stuff about blockchain. Of course, we all know about Bitcoin, but blockchain is really starting to get some traction outside of the context of Bitcoin. And we're seeing a lot of blockchain conferences pop up. This is a little one happening here in San Francisco. We wanted to come up, get a feel for what's going on, share the information with you. So really excited to be joined by our first guest, Bruce Pond, the founder and CEO of Ascribe. Bruce, welcome. Thank you very much, my pleasure. Absolutely, so you've got a session coming up later where you're talking about uh, blockchain, make sure I get it right, as the uh, ownership layer for the internet. What does that mean? What are you talking about? Yeah, what, what we saw was we were actually one of the very first use cases of non-financial use cases of blockchain technology where we we're using the Bitcoin as a notarization layer for intellectual property. And our idea was that, you know, there's a lot of intellectual property created in the world right now. And most of that, the attribution gets lost, the provenance gets lost, um, and it just spreads out there on the internet. And this is by design of the internet. And we said, hmm, you know, since most of the creation on the internet is intellectual now, is there a way to notarize who does what, where, when, why? And so that later on, if you find some content, you can find out who the original creator was and maybe reward them. And, and so we hear all the time about how difficult uh, blockchain is and it's, it's a heavy technology and you can only kick out so many Bitcoins per unit time you know, to be safe. But how do we start to apply blockchain technology to a problem like that where you don't want something heavy, you don't want something uh, onerous because obviously to make it work you want to be touching a lot of a lot of uh, pieces of intellectual property you want to be changing the you know exchanging that, that data how does it work how does that heavy lifting work on something like intellectual property right so this is exactly one of the problems we've seen we saw that if we were going to ascribe uh, a photo marketplace's content um, we were working with one in Berlin they had a hundred thousand photos a day that were coming online and they said well if we put this on the blockchain is it going to be notarized? You know, is it all going to be reliable? And you know, the throughput of blockchain is about 100,000 transactions a day. So if we were to put even just that one marketplace's photos on the blockchain, we would explode it. It wouldn't be able to handle the throughput. Right. And so that got us actually looking at other other uh, solutions to say, hmm, how can we how can we take it off Bitcoin blockchain and put it onto some other scalable type of blockchain? And was that because of the original purpose of the blockchain, at least that you were using for this application, was for Bitcoin? So there really wasn't a concept of high transaction rate, high throughput rate, high volume. Is that why it was architected in such a way? Yeah, so Bitcoin blockchain was architected uh, in a really smart way. I mean, it was actually a, a huge advancement in the world, but it was also, it's an extremely paranoid network by nature, right? It, you're trying to secure money and make sure that people aren't um, messing with the system. Um, and the initial design was kind of a beta release. And the thing with Bitcoin was it took off as a beta release and it, it baked in its current form, right? You weren't, you, it wasn't able to mature and harden uh, to build in these concepts of scalability, throughput, all this kind of stuff. Right, right. So now you applied it to intellectual property, but then, as you said, we talked a little bit off camera, you discovered that it wasn't the perfect application, uh, the Bitcoin application for blockchain as the platform for doing some of these other non-financial services, non-paranoid applications, as you said. So found an opportunity, and as all great entrepreneurs did, you, uh, you jumped on it. So talk about your announcement today. We talked about a little bit before we went on air. What's going on? Yeah. Exciting news for you guys. So today we announced that um, we're rolling out BigChainDB. It's the world's first scalable blockchain database. And what it does is it completes this stack of uh, modules and components that allow for people to build uh, applications in a decentralized way. Like today we have different platforms like Chain, Enigma, uh, Tendermint, all these type of things that make uh, blockchain accessible to all developers around the world and enterprise. Um, you have Ethereum, which does smart contracts, and you have file storage, which is IPFS. What has been missing is a database that can handle the throughput that's necessary for all these transactions to occur. So if you're going enterprise grade, where you're, you're talking global transactions from multiple different sources, and you're talking throughput of thousands of transactions a second, there is no blockchain out there that currently can handle that. Um, we built it, and it's Big Chain DB that we announced today here. Awesome, and then what is the impact on an optimized database for the blockchain build out? 
it allows for enterprises to, right now there's a thousand enterprises experimenting with blockchain technology, starting right. with financial services, now we're going into the industrial sectors. And the key question that most CIOs and CTOs have is, great, we can do a proof of concept, but when we're done, Bitcoin blockchain does two transactions a second, and all the other ones do 30 to 100. Um, is this going to be my enter enterprise grade solution? Because right, we, can, right. we can play in a sandbox, but if I can't deploy production, then it's useless to and me. Two per second's not, uh, not cutting it these days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what applications do you see this enabling to move from a POC around a Bitcoin-based you know, kind of financial services uh, test to, wow, we can use this technology for all types of things. What are, some, what are you seeing from, from some of your customers out in the field? Right, so first off, like Big Chain DB is a component of the entire stack. We play well with everybody. So we play well with Ethereum, we play well with uh, Tendermint, any other um, blockchain company out there because there's just so much to do. Um, and the way it's going to work is that um, we work with enterprises, we work with our channel partners like the blockchain companies to roll out this technology to enterprise. Yeah? And there's a whole bunch of use cases uh, from getting transparency across your supply chain. So currently in a supply chain you'll have multiple databases at various node points. So at the manufacturer, distribution, all this kind of stuff, right? And it's really easy to lose sight of where your, how your supply chain is doing. So that's right. a great use case. Banking, capital markets, you know, easing the, the whole process of settlement reconciliation in the banking sector. Um, payments, so being able to do cross-border cross payments in a much, much faster way, reducing risk, reducing escrow costs, all this sort of stuff. The blockchain is going to affect the world in a way that the internet has affected the world, where right now, if you go to a hotel that doesn't have free Wi-Fi, you, you want to walk out the door. Blockchain is going to insinuate itself in all, all facets of society um, as an underlying kind of pipe on how our society runs. It'll make it faster, more efficient, just better for everybody. So what was the secret sauce? What was the breakthrough that you guys were able to develop that makes this database better for this use case? So, you know, uh, blockchain itself was a fundamental breakthrough in uh, technology on a whole bunch of different levels. Um, most of the people in the, in the industry um, didn't come from big data though. Neither did we, but what we did was we said, hmm, if we need to scale this to the, to the world, is there any other example out there of scaling at a, with high throughput, um, petabytes of capacity and low latency? And the answer is yes, distributed databases. So we actually started with this concept of using distributed databases and then building on top of that blockchain characteristics. And that was the breakthrough. That was one of the breakthroughs, was just opening our mind saying, we can't start with the blockchain architecture and then try to scale it up. We actually start with something that already scales and then build in the blockchain characteristics, the first one. Second thing is what we do is, um, in the Bitcoin world right now, every single transaction has to be verified before it goes on the blockchain. We switched that around. We said the limiting factor is to um, take that away and just put all the transactions on there in different blocks and then check them afterwards. So what you're doing is you're laying down the railroad track and then the train comes afterwards. And the train only passes over that block when all the transactions are verified. But by doing that, you're able to put a million transactions every single second on as a rail, and then later on you're verifying very quickly behind the scenes. If there's a bad transaction in one of the blocks, you kick that out and you put it back forward of all the good transactions. So let's say 1,000 transactions, one is bad. Take out the bad transaction, put 99, 999 later down the road and verify that later. Right. Pretty exciting stuff. We call that pipelining. So how can people, I'll give you the last word, uh, we're here at the conference, how can people uh, learn more about what you guys are up to? Go to our website, bigchaindb.com. We have an expansive white paper. Um, we have de dev hooks, so everybody can start playing with it. Our goal is to make it so that people can have a Big Chain DB instance running in less than one minute. In less than one minute? Yeah. Very good. All right, Bruce. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by, and uh, good luck on your talk later today.